and he is our revered boss all the time. <laughs> and that applies to all the Buddhists around the world and all the democracy activists around the world. In that sense, His Holiness is a true democrat. And remembering legendary George Fernandez, he is also a democracy activist and also a great friend of Tibetan Tibetan people. I think I'm quoting George Fernandez here. I'm not suggesting that you all do this. So when we, when Tibet was occupied, and His Holiness and 80,000 Tibetans had to flee from Tibet to India, so George Fernandez was in Mumbai. Then he was so agitated, he called some of his friends to go and submit a memorandum at the Chinese consulate in Mumbai. He called the consulate and said, we are coming here with a petition. Then finally, when the day came to submit the petition, it, from few people, it turned out to be 1,000 people who went to the Chinese consulate in Mumbai. But then when they reached there, the door, the windows, everything was shut. <laughs> and then when he realized that the, the consulate will not be open, they are not going to accept the memorandum. So he shouted a few times, then he got the loudspeaker, shouted a few times, then finally he thought, okay, he got this idea because he saw some uh, officials sneaking out from the uh, window. So he sent one of his friends to collect a lot of eggs and another friend to get a portrait of Mao Zedong. Now, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not recommending you do this. Then, and then obviously uh, they, they did what they had to do. And then the George Fernandez, uh, the mentor, as you mentioned, Manohar Lohia, he said, that's a stupid mistake you made, George, for doing that. But then the Chinese government sent a protest letter to the Indian government saying, you have heard the sentiments of the Chinese people, so we need an unconditional apology from the Indian government. The Pandit Nehru at that time wrote back to Chow and Lai, he said, look, I am a Prime Minister of India, but we have a political party system. This George Fernandez and the political party is a different party, so I have no control over them. <laughs> Chow and Lai wrote back and said, I don't give a damn about your political party system, but I, will, I want an unconditional apology. Otherwise, for 100 years, I will, we will neither forgive, and forget, uh, neither forgive and forget you. And that day, George Fernandez said, I had to be. I had to take side, and I had to take the side of His Holiness Dalai Lama for good. So since that day, he saw the George Fernandez regarded himself as a true friend of His Holiness Dalai Lama and true friend of the Tibetan people. Now, I think there are many Tibetans in this room. On behalf of all the Tibetans, I can say he's not just a true but a rare friend. Whenever we are in trouble here in Delhi, we used to have plenty of troubles. When we were in Delhi College, we used to go to uh, Chinese embassy near Chanakya police station, then we used to land up in, as we know, all the activist uh, places, like prison, things like that. So we used to go to our trusted friend, George. And then we always say, please, help us. He was, a, he was at, at times, he was a minister at times, he was a member of parliament. Not only he used to listen to us, he always tells his secretary to write a note to the concerned authority. Not only write a note, then he calls himself, whether he received the note, and Tibetan people, Tibetans should be released. Then he will go himself personally, get Tibetans released. At one time, Chinese Prime Minister was here. A lot of Tibetans were arrested. He himself went to the Supreme Court and appealed for the release of Tibetans. When Tibetans were released, he led the march next day. <laughs> But then the difference, again, about George Fernandez Di was that, uh, again, he's rare. Because when he became the defense minister, his support for Tibet and Tibetan people remained the same. Normally, when, once you're in official position, once you're in government, you shy away a bit. But we could still approach him. He still came, despite a lot of debate within the government, he came to Tibetan events here in Masjid Tibetan camp in Delhi. And he received his solemnness, Dalai Lama. 
the ambassador Zee was a true friend. And at that time, he did make a controversial statement also. He said, Pakistan is not our ad ad adversary, but China is. And then he came out a lot of pressure within the government for saying that. But again, he did not shy away from saying all these things and doing what he actually believed. Now, he didn't do it out of sympathy for Tibetan people per se. He has sympathy for all the refugees and all the marginalized people around the world. He was similarly concerned with Tamils. In fact, the Burmese activists, as Carl mentioned, when we used to go to meet George Fernandez, Burmese activists were living in his official residence. So he was that uh, engaged and involved as a person, as a leader. In that sense, he was also a true Democrat. And more than that, he really felt that Tibet was and is a core issue for India. He sincerely felt, and he strongly advocated, that after the invasion and occupation of Tibet, China came to the border of India, hence we have the longest border dispute between India and China. He sincerely felt that. He sincerely felt that Tibet was vital as an environment for the whole of Asia, particularly for India. As we know, the 10 major rivers of Asia flow from Tibet. Indus and Satluj River from India, from Tibet to India to Pakistan. Brahmaputra River from Tibet to India to Bangladesh. Salwin and Mekong River from Tibet all the way to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, all the way to, we know, Vietnam. And Yangtze River and Yellow River. Yellow River, the cradle of Chinese civilization, starts from Tibet. So Tibet is the major source of fresh water. And then there are some experts who say that before, wars were fought over land. Nowadays, wars are fought over energy. Soon, wars will be fought over water. And Tibet is the, the origin of fresh water and 10 major rivers which provide fresh water for more than a billion people. And also, Tibet is called the third port. After Antarctica and Arctic, Tibet has the third highest reserve of ice. The difference being from Antarctica and Arctic, when they melt, it goes to ocean. But as far as Tibet's ice is concerned, when they melt, it provides fresh water for all the major rivers. So hence, Tibet issue is not just the issue of six million Tibetans. Environmentally, it's an issue for whole of Asia and more than a billion people. And geopolitically, it's a major issue because you have the two largest populated countries in the whole world, China and India, facing each other over the border of Tibet. And spiritually, as His Holiness mentioned, Buddhism is one of the most ancient civilization. And Tibetans can take pride in saying this, and His Holiness always says this, that the best preserved text and teaching of Buddha is in the Tibetan literature now. And India, obviously, is our guru, because we learn Buddhism from India. But Tibetans take great pride in saying that we are the best chelas. <laughs> And with yes, disciples, and with His Holiness as our leader and as our teacher, we can clearly see we are the best disciple. So in that sense, George Fernandez truly believed the Tibet issue is not just the issue for Tibetans. It is the issue for India. It is the issue for Asia. It is the issue for the whole world. That's why he was committed till the end. In that sense, he was a true friend, a rare friend, much beloved, and he was a true democrat. People like him are very rare in this world. And today, I think it's a great and important occasion to remember him. And His Holiness Dalam always says, always advise us, always keep your old friends and remember your old friends and make new friends. And George Fernandez will always be a friend of Tibetans friends of refugees, friends, a friend of marginalized people around the world, and friends of democracy activists around the world. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir.